Hi guys, today you will be learning about cellular transport with me, James J. There are three types of cellular transportation, passive transport, facilitated transport, and active transport. Uh, in passive transportation, I'll be explaining about diffusion, osmosis, isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic solutions, and facilitated diffusion. Diffusion is when molecules move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Like all passive transportations, this does not require any energy. When diffusion occurs with water and other dissolved materials, the process is called osmosis, as molecules move through the semi-permeable cell membrane. Now, let's talk about isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic solutions. First, a solution is isotonic to a cell when the solution has the same amount of dissolved particles or solutes as the cell. <laughs> this allows water molecules to move in and out of a cell at an equal rate. When a solution is hypertonic to a cell, it means it has a higher concentration of solutes than the cell. Due to the process of osmosis, water leaks out from the cell to the solution causing it to shrivel up and eventually die. If a solution has a lower concentration of solutes, it is considered to be hypotonic to a cell as water moves into the cell. This causes the cell to continuously swell up, eventually bursting to death. Some molecules are unable to pass through the cell membrane. This is when facilitated diffusion shows up. In the process of facilitated diffusion, water molecules move through protein channels and protein carriers. Molecules are simply eaten by the protein carriers and then ejected out on the other side, into the cell. Now enough about that, let's learn about active transport. I'll be talking about sodium potassium pumps, uh, endocytosis, and uh, phagocytosis, and exocytosis. When sodium and potassium travels throughout a cell, it doesn't go directly through the cell membrane. However, they use a special device called a sodium-potassium pump. As an adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, molecule attaches to the pump, the pump gathers three sodium molecules and opens up on the other side, dropping out the sodium molecules and now gathering a pair of potassium molecules. As the ATP molecule detaches from the pump, the pump opens up on the other side again, dropping the potassium molecules and gathering another three sodium molecules. This process gets constantly repeated, but only if ATP is provided as an energy source. Endocytosis is the process of particles moving into the cell. As the particles fuse inside to the cell, they form little capsules called vesicles, and are later released from the vesicles throughout the cell. Now, when endocytosis happens between a white blood cell and harmful molecules like bacteria, the process is called phagocytosis. As soon as the bacteria enters the cell and forms vesicles, another vesicle called lysosomes, which contain digestive material that can dissolve the bacteria, fuse with the bacteria vesicles and destroy them. Exocytosis is the exact opposite process of endocytosis as waste and other particles get ejected out of the cell. Now to give an overall summarization of what we have just gone through, both passive transportation and facilitated transportation occur as particles move from areas of high to low concentration, and they do not require any energy. However, in passive transportation, cells diffuse with nonpolar and hydrophobic molecules, while facilitated transportation diffuses with polar and hydrophilic molecules transporting particles throughout protein channels. Lastly, active transportation requires energy, ATP, and transports particles using devices like the sodium potassium pump. And that's about it, and thanks for watching.